Hey folks, how are you? Welcome to Let's Get Cooking. I'm your host, Charles Minnick. Oh, as I said, welcome to our first episode of Let's Get Cooking. Tonight, we're going to make a chicken piccata. Uh, chicken piccata is a classic Italian dish with, of course, chicken, uh, capers, and a whole list of other ingredients. So before we get started, let's go through what we need to start with. First of all, you're going to need chicken, boneless breast of chicken with all the skin and fat trimmed off of it. You're also going to need olive oil, white wine, pepper, some salt, some garlic, some capers, a little bit of butter, and we also have almonds tonight because we're going to make with this a side dish of summer squash and zucchini almondine. Now, um, first things first, we're going to cut up the vegetables that we're going to need tonight. So, we have some nice fresh summer squash and zucchini. We're going to start by cutting the ends off. Now, you will notice these are smaller summer squashes and zucchini, and that's what you want when you cook. When your friend gives you around, you know, this time of year, those huge summer squash and zucchini from their garden, you don't want those. Those have no flavor, they're tough, and you've got to cook them a lot longer. So, what we like is we like the smaller ones. Now, these are gonna cost you about 99 cents to $1.29 a pound. Well worth it. So here we go. We're gonna cut these up. Get rid of those ends right there. Put that aside. And now, the zucchini. And the reason we're cutting this first is this will actually take a little bit longer to cook than our chicken. So we want to get this done first. Put that aside right now. I'm going to turn on the water for those. And then we'll get our chicken ready. Now first and foremost, you want white wine. Uh, because you want to cook with a libation. It's always more fun that way. So, we have our boneless breast of chicken. Now, something this thick. It's going to take a while to cook unless you put it in the oven. And we're actually going to use the olive oil to brown ours up and saute it a little bit, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in half like that. And then, we're going to cut it like this along the grain. What this does is it just makes it thinner and it cooks faster and it cooks more evenly. There we go. I'm going to wipe our hands off because, oh, that's just chicken goo. All right. Now what we want to do first is we want to flour it. Now we have in here about a cup of flour. Now this isn't a bag. You'll see people dredge it, is what it's called, in a bowl or a plate. I say go to your supermarket, get yourself the absolute cheapest Ziploc bag you can find. They come in packs of 10 or 12 because you can use it for marinades or, as we're going to use it tonight, flouring, dredging. So what we're going to do is, we get that flour, we are going to give it a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of salt. Now, you can salt and pepper it to taste. That's up to you. And all we have to do is take our chicken, Toss it in the bag and then shake it just like shake and bake. Gonna get rid of that plate and we are gonna grab ourselves another new plate. It's just cleaner that way. Now, 
We have our chicken. Nice and floured. I'm going to use the tongs, take them out of here. Again, it's cleaner. Shake off the excess flour. There we go. Let that set for a minute. Take a libation. Mine's just water, by the way. This is public access TV. We're not allowed to drink on the television. So, all right, we have our chicken ready. We get our water ready for the zucchini and summer squash. What we're gonna do, so we're just going to put a little bit in here. There we go. Oh, that's good. And we're gonna make sure that's on high. And just give it a little stir. We're also gonna take a little bit of salt. And we're just gonna season that with a little bit of salt. And we're gonna finish that with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter, and some almonds. But that's for a little bit later. So we'll get that going. In the meantime, we have our chicken. What we need now is to get our chicken going. We need our olive oil. We're gonna come over here to the pan. Before we turn this burner on with the pan, we wanna make sure we get our oil in the pan first. We're gonna use about three to four tablespoons of oil. Now this pan, just swish it around a little bit, and we are going to turn this on to a medium heat. We want to heat the oil first before we add our chicken. Now, you see our chicken is nicely floured. Uh, the reason we do this is, one, it creates a little barrier once it hits the hot oil. That way, all the chicken goodness stays in the chicken, gives it a nice flavor. The flour actually gives it a nice little nutty flavor as well, which adds to the depth of your meal. So we let that go. We got the zucchini and summer squash working nicely. And in case you're wondering, this pan we have already pre-made. There we are. A little bit of rice peel off. I made that ahead of time. Uh, just because it takes a little while and it's just easier that way. So now let's look at the rest of our ingredients. We have scallions. We're going to use this to season up a little bit of the uh, or season up the chicken piccata. Now there are many different variations of chicken piccata. Some have scallions, some have, some have onions, it's whatever you want. It's one of those dishes that tastes great and you can make it your own. So we're gonna get this done right here. Now notice for the scallion, I'm leaving this little root part. What we're gonna do now is take this, put that aside, and we're gonna save this root for the garnish. I'm gonna cut off the little hairy end and Make it about like this. And what we're going to do next is slice the end about three quarters of the way down. So we have this. Okay, we're going to make sure we get all the way through. This is going to be our garnish. And it's the edible garnish as well, so it's going to taste good later. What we do with this now is we take this and we put it in, it's called an ice bath. Ice bath is just a little bit of ice and water. And what that will do is it'll open it up like a little flower. And we'll put that aside for the moment. All right. Now, our oil is heating up. We'll see how well it's doing. What I'll do now is I'll take a little bit of water 
and I'm just going to throw it on. If it starts popping, the oil is ready. Not quite ready, so I'm going to turn it up a notch. That'll help it along. Almost there, because as you know, oil and water don't mix. Let's see how this is doing. That's doing very nicely. Now you can tell with the tongs by touching them that they're getting they're getting moist. They're getting tender. They're going to be nice, nice and soft when we're finished with them. All right, we're popping right now, so that means we're ready. So we're going to take our chicken. Gonna lay that in there one at a time. And all we're going to do is just brown these up. There we go. Gonna let those sit for a little bit. Swish the oil around. Let's let that sit for a moment or two. And from there, Yep, gonna brown those up on either side. Probably about three or four minutes, minutes each side. Now, once that's done, we're going to deglaze the pan. That's where the white wine comes in. It's not just for drinking while you're cooking. There's actually a purpose for this. Deglazing is, when that's done, there's gonna be a bunch of particles on the bottom of the pan. What this will do, it'll lift those up. And that particle, Think of it as like flavor crystals. I mean, that stuff is, it's concentrated flavor. We want to lift it up and incorporate it into everything else. So we'll be using this, a little bit of garlic. Now you'll need about a teaspoon of garlic. You can either use one clove or what I do is I buy the crushed stuff. Already pre-crushed makes it much easier. Um, we'll also be adding the capers. Um, these are called nonpareil capers. All that means is they're small. There's capers which are bigger, the nonpareil capers are smaller. Um, and apart from that, if, in case you're curious, capers are actually grown in the so south of France, and from there they migrated around the entire Mediterranean. They think they may be from the Far East, but nobody knows for sure. Now the thing about capers is, this is an Italian dish, but it's a French thing, the capers are. It's kind of like Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish. Go figure. Now what capers are is a caper is a bud of a flower. It takes a lot of capers to make one jar, but they are good. And this right here is just a jar of pickled capers. It's nothing but a capers, sometimes a little bit of salt, Sometimes a little bit preservative, and beyond that, it's just vinegar. So, we're going to use that, and a little bit of butter. Oh, look at that. Those are browning up nicely. You know, don't be afraid to turn them. See how they're doing. That flour is doing well. Now also, with your flour mixture, you could add anything else you want to it. If you want to add onion powder, rosemary, thyme, you make this dish your own. It is a classic Italian dish, but you know what? This is the basic. You do the rest. Same thing with the summer squash and zucchini. If you love garlic, add more garlic to it. So. These are almost ready. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drain these off a little bit because we don't want that much water. There we go. We'll put those right back over there. Now we need our butter. Just going to put about a, about a teaspoon of butter in there. And now I'm going to sprinkle about two teaspoons of almonds. 
Now, if you want to get really creative, you can go to your local New Hampshire liquor store and you can get Frangelico. Uh, Frangelico is a hazelnut liqueur. Tastes great over vegetables like this. It's going to cost you probably $2 for a little ounce or two, uh, but it's great to cook with. Oh, look at these go. These are beautiful. Look at those. Look at that. I hope you guys can see this over the camera. But what we have is we have a nice brown color right there. That means we're getting a little flowery crust that we're looking for. Now you can also get even more creative with this, with that chicken. And you can use breadcrumbs. You could do a wash with the flour, like I just did, and then put it in egg whites, and then dredge it in breadcrumbs using the same bag technique that I showed you earlier. Like I said, shake and bake had it right. Very simple to do, nice and clean. When you're done with this, poof, it's done, it's gone. There's no mess. So, and if you're gonna use breadcrumbs, use the Planko brand type of breadcrumbs, not a brand, brand, so to speak. It's a style. It's a thicker, bigger breadcrumb. And the reason I say use that is breadcrumbs can really absorb the oil. Think of a piece of bread when you're dipping it and dredging it in your gravies and such. All right. These are just about done. We're gonna take these out. I'm gonna put these aside for a little bit. Okay, I don't know if the camera can pick this up over here, but we've got, you know, we've got some crusting on the bottom of the pan. That is what we're going to deglaze in just two moments. Okay, we're gonna turn this down. I think I'll turn this right off because these are coming out perfect. Don't want to overcook it, but now, all right, we've got, now we're going to use the wine. As I said, I use a Chardonnay. You can use whatever kind of white wine you want. If you like a Pinot Grigio, if you like a Riesling, use it because for one, you're drinking it. And two, you're eating it. Never buy the white cooking wine you see next to the vinegars and all that. If you're not gonna drink it, don't put it in your food because it's gonna flavor what you cook. So if you like to drink it, cook with it. You don't need much. Um, for this, I'm gonna use just about three or four ounces. That's about half a cup. There we go. See that? Now. There we are. Now that, we're just going to let sit and boil like that for a moment. We're going to take our garlic, put about a teaspoon. Realize too, garlic is a nice strong spice. You don't want to use too much because a little goes a long way and you don't want to be that guy in the office the next day. Believe me, I've been there and you don't want to be that guy in the office the next day. All right, now we've got some capers. How much you want to use, that's up to you. I like a lot. Now notice I'm taking them right out of the jar. Because one, you don't want that pickle juice because you don't want your piccata tasting like pickles. So we've got that. And now, we're going to put in our scallions. Mmm, that smells incredible. Incredible. I wish TV had, I don't know, Smellotron or Flavortron because that tastes great. We also need a lemon. Think about the juice of a half lemon. Now, when you strain this, be careful of any seeds going in there. If you see a seed go in, 
take it out because seeds taste bitter, especially when you cook. So we got that in there right now. That's looking good. All right. Look at all that bubbly goodness in there, huh? That looks good. So what we're going to do now is gonna let that reduce by about a quarter to a half. That will take a few moments. But in the meantime, what we can start doing is plating up the rest of our dish. So, luckily my wife let me bring out the good china tonight. What we'll do is just take a few of these and realize too that one single breast of chicken really made enough for two meals. So we are going to put those right there. Let that reduce. Oh, need a spoon. Gonna plate up some of this. There we go. You know, I'll put that right over there because I think we have a better camera angle from over here. Now, that's looking good. Now our rice, as I mentioned, our rice pilaf, I made that ahead of time because I don't feel like sitting here boiling rice all night. It actually works out better, I think, if you make rice a day ahead because I like working with sticky rice myself. Now, what I'm going to do is I have a little ramekin. You can use anything you want. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spoon the rice in here. And then use the back of the spoon. We're just going to mash it in there. I hope it's sticky enough. Because if it's not, it's not going to come out like I wanted it to. This is called presentation. You eat half of what you eat, you eat with your eyes. And I don't know who said that, but that is true. If you got everything in a blender, on a plate, it's not going to look good, not going to taste good. You'll need too many libations to enjoy it. So what we have here is we have a classic rice pilaf. I'm going to put that right in there. And I'm just going to center that on the plate. Get a little tap. Oh, that came out pretty good, pretty good. Now, remember earlier we sliced up that scallion? That was our garnish. And we put it in the ice bath because if we can get a little shot of this over here. Okay, folks, now we have our rice in here. What we're going to do, let me put that right up here for you. So we get a nice tight shot of this. What we're going to do is we put the rice in the middle and the ramekin upside down. When we give it a good tap like this, and we lift it up, voila, does that not look gorgeous? That is restaurant quality right there. Now, as I said, you eat with your eyes. This is a plate that you are eating with your eyes first because we have the nice color right here, some yellows, some greens from the summer squash zucchini. And, oh, remember earlier when we sliced that scallion up? and we put it in the ice bath. The reason we did was this right here. If you get a nice tight shot, it opens it up like a little flower. Looks beautiful on a plate. All right, we're almost there. We can see this is reduced a little bit. This is looking good. We're gonna do one more thing here. We're gonna take a little bit of our flour that we used earlier, just about a teaspoon, and we're gonna sprinkle it in here. What this is going to do, 
This is going to just make it a little bit thick. And that's all. It's, you know, because you got wine, you got a touch of butter. You've got all the moisture from everything you've been cooking. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to add a little more butter. Here we go. Actually, I don't even think I added butter to it earlier. So since I'm adding a little more butter, we're going to add a little more flour. Get that nice and thick. And that's it. See how that's thickening nice? Ah, oh, that's thickening right up. So. There we are with that. Look at that, nice and thick. And we want it a little bit thick because we don't want it running all over the plate. So then we just take our capers and we just spoon all that goodness right over there. Look at that. And if you find it's too thick for you, guess what? You can add a little bit of water or you could add a little bit more wine. All right. Now, let's clean up the side of this here. Look at this. That is a classic chicken piccata. All right, folks. Let's go back over here because I think we need to get that shot. There we go. Classic chicken piccata, huh? Look at that. That is awesome. You're going to love this. Now, the final touch. We get Dave in our control booth over there. He can't talk to me, but I know he's saying, Charles, save me some, save me some. Well, I will. But first, I'm going to have to have a taste of this. Mm. Wow, that is incredible. I can't help but say this. I promised my wife I would not say this on TV, but mm. boom goes the dynamite, folks. This is great. Try this at home. Now listen, as I said, this is our first show. We had a lot more episodes to do. I got a lot more recipes up here. I got 20 years in the restaurant business, managing restaurants, owning my own restaurant, cooking at home. Why? Because my wife can't cook. Well, she can, but I'm just better. So, with all due respect, if you guys have anything you'd like to see on this show, let me know. My email address is mchm411 at comcast.net. Now that's gonna flash up on the screen in a second, so if you missed it, you're gonna get another chance. Um, in the future, by all means, like I said, if you have any questions, such as, Charles, how do I cook this? Let me know, I'll show you. You can even come onto my show, stand right here next to me, and we'll do it together. How easy is that? You wanna know, Charles, how do I cook for a family of four on $10? I'll let you know. Ask me. Even other things like, how do I hold a knife? I'll let you know. Also, any of you cooks in Goffstown that are restaurant owners, such as Mel, down at Patrick's, or Sawyer's, anybody, even you guys at Patiglio's or Vixter's, come on down. Show me how to make a steak and cheese. Why not? Um, you know, so yeah, by all means, let me know. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. And from there, well, we'll all get along. So remember, I'm Charles Minnick. I'm your host. And, well, let's get cooking. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week.